If we go back to 2004, American Idiot comes out at the perfect time because it was the George Bush era and something needed to be said. Uh, I was kind of hoping for some Green Day in around 2016, 2017, but better late than never. Are we looking at, with whatever you're doing next, an American Idiot part two? I, I think that this record is sort of uh, like uh, the best of everything that Green Day has to sort of like the 30 years of experience that we have kind of come together, whether it's like it's something that from Dookie or American Idiot, I think somehow we were able to sort of bridge the gap into making like something that is like our uh, an essential record for us. Well, the first single is uh, American Dream is Killing Me, which made me think that you were going to go down this direction again. Well, well, American Dream is Killing Me originally was written about three or four years ago. So it's technically the first song on the record. But uh, like for Father of All, we we didn't want to go political because it was so obvious and like it was such low hanging fruit for because we have, you know, just terrible politics and terrible t division in the United States. But this time we we brought it out and it felt like it was the perfect time for it. We got away from the politics for a while to where we just didn't want to be like, you know, another pundit on CNN, like finger pointing. But it's like, you know, songs and political songs, It's it takes a lot of heart to do that. And I think it's like, if you keep doing it for the sake of doing it just because you're angry, then you take the heart out of it. And then it just becomes just part of what everyone is complaining about. So uh, it it takes those special inspired moments to really have like a moment like the American dream is killing me. You guys were part of the cohort of the 1990s who managed to hit it big before the internet came along and completely upset the music industry. Uh, there's you, the Pumpkins, uh, Foo Fighters, uh, Chili Peppers, and a bunch of others. Why do you think that the music of the 90s continues to resonate today? I mean, we're 25, 30 years out. What is it about that era that that has people still so excited? I think that um, it was like the music that came from the '90s was sort of like the, like the last hurrah of uh, you know rock and roll before you know things like cell phones and and everybody wanted to take take selfies. Selfie wasn't a word yet, and uh, it was just a lot of fun and and not a whole bunch of documentation. Yeah, I think I think back in the day, I think you were a little more vested when you went to the record store. You had to look into things and dive into a genre or dive into an album, um, that had an effect on how bands created their sound. And maybe a lot of those, a lot of those bands had established their, their particular sound or whatever pretty solid um, when they, by the time they got big. And now when you hear something that's blown up, it's, it's interesting because um, you've got so many more influences now. Well, it's also rather interesting. You look and see exactly how many stadium-sized bands have been created since the year 2000, and the number is quite small compared to what it used to be. So it must be nice to be able to ride this wave, you know, still, I mean, how many years after Gilman Street? <laughs> well, I think also the attention span uh, to the, the listener was, you know, you went to the record store, you bought an album, you listened to the album, or a tape in, in a lot of cases, and you listen to the whole thing, and you get into it, and you know it, you know, like after this song, you know the sequence of it in your head if, if you're a fan. And, and I think that attention span kind of carries over to, say, like going to a concert and still still loving the music that, you know, you have basically embedded into your soul by listening to it so much. One of the last times that I talked to you was 2004. Uh, you were here for a pop-up show at the Phoenix in Toronto. It was the day after American Idiot comes out. And at that time, we were still, you know, illegal downloading and file sharing and all that sort of stuff. You were, the album came out on a Tuesday. The show was on a Wednesday. The kids knew all the words when you hit the stage that day. I, I'll never forget that and think, how did this happen? And it was, uh, it turns out it was prescient for what was going to be coming in the years ahead. Now, with uh, the Dookie uh, 30th anniversary, uh, what can we expect from that? Yeah, I, the 30-year anniversary of Dookie, I mean... Right now, we we've put out like a lot of like old demos and things like that for for people to uh, get into. And uh, I think like for as far as touring, um, you know, to probably play a few more tracks off the record. And <laughs> it the record is about I think twenty seven and a half minutes long, 
So, I mean, we could cover that whole record and we would still need probably an hour and a half set to like, to go for, to play the rest of uh, our uh, live stadium show. So yeah, we're gonna be uh, playing like, you know, music off more off that. And also the 20 year anniversary of American Idiot um, also will be, uh, it's pretty special too. The fact that here we are, you know, celebrating these records that happen to have like these, uh, 10 year moments away from each other is pretty, it feels pretty incredible. Well, it's also really cool is because how many, you know, heritage acts, and I'm not putting you in the category of heritage acts, but how many acts have been around as long as you that where people are still interested in the new record? That's pretty cool. It's, it's a handful of people that can do that. I mean, <laughs> Rolling Stones kind of redeem themselves. Springsteen puts out a new album. Yeah, okay, fine. That's for the hard, uh, the hardcore. But you guys continue to put out records and people continue to buy them. I mean, we've always looked at ourselves as a, this is our career. You know, that we're a career band. And I don't know, I think if you put the work in and you care about each song, you know, you may, people may not love every song, but they're gonna love a lot of it if you put the effort in time and, and give a shit and do it right. 